Psalm 1 takes us to the crossroads of life and shows us that we can choose between two paths in life, the way of the godly or the way of the godless. God describes these roads and tells us about their benefits and drawbacks. Part 1. The Godly Person – The Life That Prospers The psalmist began by outlining our best option, the godly path. The word blessed is known as an intensive plural in Hebrew. Oh, the blessedness, we could say. Oh, the joys. Oh, the happiness. It is a blessing in multiples. In fact, God is constantly showering us with blessings. We learn about a godly person's life by observing what he or she does not do. Take note of how many of the Ten Commandments are negative, beginning with, you shall not. Exodus 20, 1 to 17, New King James Version. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God. For starters, the godly person is blessed because he or she does not follow the advice of this lost world. The word ungodly comes from the Latin word for loose. It refers to someone who has broken free from God. People's ideas and values are increasingly being shaped by the lifestyles and opinions of sports and entertainment celebrities. As Christians, we must be cautious about where we seek advice. We should be concerned if it comes from anywhere other than the Word of God. Psalm 1, 1, New King James Version. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Second, a godly person is cautious about who he or she associates with. 1 Corinthians 15, 33, New King James Version. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Birds of a feather flock together, as the old adage goes. It doesn't mean we should never be friends with unbelievers, because if we did, we'd never be able to win anyone to the Lord Jesus. But being friends is not the same as participating in all of their activities. Third, a godly person does not sit with those who mock God's holy things. Take note of the sequence, walking, standing, and sitting. When we seek advice from the wrong people and associate with the wrong crowd, we will find ourselves in the company of those who mock the things of the Lord. Psalm 1, 2. New King James Version. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. What, on the other hand, does a godly person do? But his delight is in the Lord's law. When we open the scriptures, we are hearing God's very thoughts, teachings, and directions. Because God's word is a godly person's delight, he or she constantly meditates on it. Meditation is the soul's equivalent of digestion. Food becomes a part of our bodies when we digest it. When we incorporate God's word into our thinking and living, it permeates both our spirit and soul. It becomes ingrained in our lives. Psalm 1, 3, New King James Version. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. After describing the godly person negatively and positively, the psalmist finally described this person. The author is actually painting a picture of a saved person. When we accept Jesus as our Saviour, life takes root because we are rooted in him. 2. 7. New King James Version Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as you have been taught, 
abounding in it with thanksgiving. Water for drinking is a metaphor for the Holy Spirit in the Bible. Like water, the Holy Spirit provides nourishment, life, and strength. Psalm 1, 3, New King James Version. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and whatever he does shall prosper. Because of what God does in those who are his, a saved person is a fruitful person. John 15, 4, New King James Version. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. The leaves that do not wither represent eternal life, and prosper represents progress. Our lives prosper when God's word is our delight, and we faithfully follow God's instructions. Part 2 the godless person, the life that perishes. Psalm 1, 4, New King James Version. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. For us, the psalmist also described the ungodly or godless person, a person who excludes God from his or her life or has no time for God is said to be godless. Verse 4 says that the ungodly person is the polar opposite of everything said in the previous verses. The ungodly are not so. The ungodly wander aimlessly like husks on the wind. The world, the flesh, and the devil can easily blow them away. Psalm 1, 5, New King James Version. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. When God judges the world, everyone will appear before him in judgment. Revelation 20, 11 to 15, New King James Version. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away. And there was found no place for them, And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it, and death and Hades delivered up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one according to his works. Then death and Hades were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And anyone not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. The ungodly, on the other hand, will be unable to stand. That is, God will find them guilty. Revelation 6, 17, New King James Version. For the great day of his wrath has come. And who is able to stand? The good news for every born-again believer is that we can stand before God in judgment based on the merits of the Lord Jesus Christ's shed blood. Romans 5, 2, New King James Version Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Psalm 1, 6. New King James Version. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The psalm ends with a final contrast between godly and godless people. The term knows refers to closeness. The Lord is personally and purposefully involved in all aspects of our lives. Ephesians 2.10. New King James Version. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. When the ungodly person decided he didn't need or want the Lord in his life, 
he didn't think about where his way would lead. Proverbs 14, 12, New King James Version There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Just as Joshua challenged the children of Israel to choose between serving the Lord and the false gods of their day, each of us must choose which path we will take in life. Joshua 24, 15, New King James Version And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your fathers served that were on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. For those of us who have chosen the path of righteousness, let us give thanks to the Lord not only for his blessings in this life, but also for our ultimate prosperity in heaven with him. May we also take pleasure in sharing the good news of his word with the world's godless. Remember, God does not want anyone to perish. He desires that his word be a source of delight for them as well. 2. Peter 3. 9. New King James Version. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance.